Howdy folks, this is Black Sorvo, and we're back to talk more about a news or update of Jurassic World Evolution 2. But first, I apologize for my two weeks absence and only posted some videos by Jurassic World Evolution 2 because I was on vacation. So today, the feature focus is about weather calamities. Since we know in Jurassic World Evolution 2, there are new biomes and environments. So there are new calamities that we'll be facing. Let's read this information on forum. Welcome back park managers. We are back with a new Jurassic World Evolution 2 feature focus. Previously, we talked about the different environments. You'll be discovering and exploring while building your parks and facilities. This week, we are staying in the game's environment to discuss one of the challenges you'll be facing, weather calamities. Jurassic World Evolution 2 lets you build parks and facilities across a wide range of, of environments, all of which have their unique weather water calamities for you to contend with. These calamities will, will introduce an additional layer of challenge by impending your progress in different ways, from sabotaging your power output, to slowing down your vehicles, or upsetting your dinosaurs. You'll be faced with water calamities across, across all modes. But you can turn them off in sandbox mode if you so choose. Shall we take a closer look at what types of weather calamities you'll be dealing in George Wall Evolution 2? Alright, so weather uh, will be hard and annoying to be faced in this game by some people, but uh, in this game, you can play and build your parts without facing calamities, but only for sandbox mode if you want. It is an option, so you can turn it on or off uh, the weather calamities. Alright, now uh, sandstorm. Managing a park in the desert. You'll need to keep an eye out of this, out of out for sandstorm. Literally, this calamity will obscure visibility throughout your parks, so range scans of dinosaurs and reptiles will be cleared, requiring them to rescan, and guest visibility cones will be reduced, limiting what they are able to view. The poor visibility won't won't be the only issue you'll have to contend with. So, the high, the high wind speed uh, will wreak havoc across your park. You will notice equipment failures. Land vehicles will be subject to engine, engine failure and power stations will periodically lose power, as well as damage to buildings which will require uh, repairing from a range of tin. You, you are also going to want to keep an eye on your dinosaurs during a sandstorm, as those brutal conditions uh, also mean that disease has a much higher chance of spreading. Try not to fret too much though. There are some things you can do to prepare for this particular calamity. Placing shelters around your park will ensure guests are able to flee, flee the oncoming storm. And ut utilizing backup generators should help to diminish too many nasty side effects from a lack of power. You can also utilize for a uh, storm damage upgrades to help protect some of your buildings. The impact of the sandstorm uh, will blind everything in the park. That could be the gas 
can get lost because they cannot find the path and also damaging to several buildings. Ranger vehicle uh, can get engine failure while the dinosaur uh, in your area will lose scans and require to rescan uh, by the rangers. If there are disease in your parks, that could be spreading more fast. And now, uh, snowstorms. A feature you can expect from Tega and Alpine Best Park, snowstorms do have some similarities to sandstorms. In terms of negatively impacting visibility, there are also clear ranger scans and reduced gas visibility but will have the additional caveat of stopping your dinosaurs from appearing of the map UI. So you'll still, have, you'll, st you'll still be able to see them in their enclosures, but not their location in the wider park. This particularly concerning due to the fact that your dinosaurs are more likely to be injured by conditions like frostbite during a snowstorm and ground vehicles are significantly slowed down so it may take you MVUs or mobile veterinary units slightly longer to help them definitely something to consider when a snowstorm is on a, the approach similarly to sandstorms though you'll be able to put some contingencies in place to protect your park and guests from this particular calamity. Having shelters in place for your guests will have considerably once visibility become an issue. But you also want to keep a very close eye on your on your enclosures once uh, the snow rolls in. So you can deploy MVUs uh, and rangers at the first sign of trouble. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, similar uh, with the uh, sandstorm, a uh, snowstorm also makes uh, blind or reduce the visibility. But there is an additional that the in that the dinosaurs are invisible on UI map, but you you still be able to see them in their enclosures. Uh, snowstorms also could make the dinosaurs injured because of frostbite and ground vehicles will be slowed down because of thick of snow covered the ground. And next is tornadoes. You'll be familiar with tornadoes from the first game and if you are playing a temperate map, there are something you, you will want to keep an eye out for. This calamity is a damaging twister which will sweep around your park, leaving destruction in in its way. Buildings and vehicles too close to the center of the tornado will like to endure some considerable damage, as will any fences or pylons. Um, which come into contact with it. They all need uh, repairing, so your rangers are going to be very busy in the aftermath. Your dinosaurs won't enjoy this particular calamity, either fleeing and becoming quickly agitated. So you'll need to keep an eye out of, uh, I mean, for both injuries and gaps. Between the likely damage to, to structures and agitated dinosaurs, you are definitely going to uh, want to make sure you have a shelter in place for your guests to flee to when a uh, tornado approaches. And don't forget to use the snow, the storm defense upgrade where possible to protect your buildings from storm damage. Uh, same calamity from the first game. 
The tornado also one of the calamities in the game. Uh, it will sweep everything and make the dinosaurs run in panic and escaping. Hurricane A feature of the tropical level available in Jurassic Evolution 2. Hurricanes cause periodic damage to buildings, fences, and pylons as they descend upon your park and are also likely to cause damage to vehicles. So the rangers you deploy to repair the damage are in for a threat. Luckily, uh, your dinosaurs won't be impacted too much by this bicycle calamity. So as long as you've got a shelter in place for your guests and a ranger team on hand to man any damage cause, uh, you should be able to manage when a tropical storm hits. Hurricane may be not really a big deal compared with two other calamities because uh, it's not impacted too much to the dinosaurs, but buildings and vehicles are still uh, could be damaged. So that's all the weather calamity. There are four of them: sandstorm, snowstorm, tornado, and uh, hurricane. This will be a hard challenge to be facing, but by a good preparation for your parts, you may save more than enough. Just remember one of one of more most important to have in the parts is build the shelter for your guest safety. Not just to keep them away and safe from escaped dinosaurs, but also keep them safe from these calamities. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts or any questions about it in the comment below. So, I see you next time. Auf Wiedersehen.